So it basically combines a number of things. So what is this top opening? So they now had a nice argument which said it's top opening so it conserves the cold air because you know, warm air rises, the cool air stays at the bottom. Which is true, but actually from a thermodynamic point of view it's not a bit of sales pitch. So, oh, you know, it opens the tops, it keeps the cool in. Um, solid state thermoelectric cooling, okay? Piezoelectric technology, little heat pump. So the, the cooling is actually in the lid. That lid actually has a cooling chip in it, that's all it does. Uh, so no compressor, no refrigerants, no moving parts, whisper silence. So it's very quiet because there's no compressor. It's, it's a static set of components. It works off 12 volt batteries. Again, big impact. So you can operate on a battery or an inverter if you want. Very low power bill, another big plus for people. And plastic body, so no rusting. You know, I remember seeing the first I saw the prototype boxes a few months ago and then I saw the final production unit in, in Mumbai in March. And it's quite interesting, you just sort of, you think, my God, is that, you know, it's a little plastic box with a plastic lid and in the lid is this insert for the cooling. Very, very simple, very easy to move and it's, it has a temperature range that's different. So, so now this is quite interesting because they were really talking about how it's dif distinctly different. So, uh, so different science, so we talk about the Peltier effect for cooling and different technology. So it's based around semiconductors. It's essentially a, a heat pump on a chip, on an electronic chip. That's what it is. That's how the cooling mechanism works. And so it has different performance dimension in terms of size, mobility, robustness, has a different structure. Um, and it actually serves a different purpose. So it does something different, but it serves a, a, a major need. And then you look in terms of price performance. Um, uh, and uh, usage environment is different um, because it's small and it's, it's, it's sealed if the power goes off it doesn't matter so much um, and then there's life cycle costs so absolutely distinctly different now they, you know so we started talking to them in so Shai Vayakhanam who some of you know Shai and I were in um, in India in January this year and we saw some of the early prototypes and they were all sitting around in a, in a, in a brainstorming area that, and saying we've got some interesting challenges because they couldn't get the cost of distribution down. Because what they found was the product was great, all the user test people wanted to buy it, but the conventional distribution channels in India take something between 7 and 10 percent of the, of the price of a, of, a, of a product goes to them, <coughs> which is low. In, in Europe, it's more like 22 to 27 percent. So if you go into a retail store, if you go to an electronics store in, 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 in Cambridge, about 25 percent of that is actually going to Dixons or whoever they are. That's why the middlemen are so wealthy in this country. The people who make the products, Sony, others may only make three or four percent. Um, in India, it's, it's seven to 10 percent, but that was still because the price was so low, distributors said, oh, we're not interested. We, you know, even with 7 or 10 percent, we're hardly going to get out of bed. We'd rather sell expensive, high-value products. So they had a problem. They had a product consumers wanted. They didn't have a distribution channel. So they were, we said, why don't you build your own distribution channel and change the cost structure of it? And so they basically teamed up with uh, some NGOs and rural organizations and completely changed the nature of the, the bypassed conventional distribution completely. And we saw, we were shown this van, which is the first prototype van, uh, and they had a van with these, um, half a dozen of these things stacked on one side, and the other side they had a display unit and, and a loudspeaker mounted on it. And it was, um, it was uh, like a, it was like a, a scoot, well, it was basically like a rickshaw taxi, right, a three-wheeler. And they had uh, the driver, and the driver were all women. It was going to be sold by women. They hired a whole team of women, and they basically said, we'll give you 5% of the cost of sale. And these women said, 5%? That's brilliant. Yeah, and uh, you get a vehicle to go with it, and you get all the uh, sales tools, etc. And when they did, they started doing these evenings. They would go around villages in an area, and they held it as a social event. Um, and they would pick dances. In India, there are these things called melas and festivals. They'd pitch up with this van, and they were taking pre-orders. And before the product launched, they had hundreds of thousands of pre-orders just by doing this. Because nobody had to pay any money, there was no deposit or anything. Just said, place an order. And um, so, 
they took that and they basically changed the whole distribution environment. I don't know if GS has got some pictures of these vans in here, because they were very interesting. Um, and so the, the, the next part, the final part of the story, of course, is now this product's being rolled out. And it's not just the Indian market where it applies, it applies across whole swathes of the developing world. And uh, you can imagine one day they might be trying to sell it in Rygate. Um, you know, you can think about the, you know, when you think about the model, the, the dis distribution model, it's very creative, but it's not actually that new. Um, uh, in, in the 70s, 60s and 70s, there were these Tupperware salesmen, you know, there's the plastic uh, utensils that were sold, and the Tupperware salesmen were all women who did as a part-time um, job to earn extra money for their families. And they would go around door to door, they would have Tupperware parties, invite their friends in. This is just a scaled up version of the same thing. You go to a village, you have a party, you invite everybody and you sell these things off the back of your van. But it's fundamentally changed the pattern of distribution. So that's another very different way of looking at creativity. And it's not actually that high tech. So, okay.